here. Let's ask from a consumer angle what we're supposed to do. I'm sitting here thinking, I remember um, at the height of this thing, going to the grocery store and not seeing toilet paper, what have you. And ever since then, I've become a squirrel. Like, I'll see, <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, I'll see, you know, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. And my husband's like, Chanel Marie. Like, we have two drawers full of, you know, let's use the toilet paper we have. No, seriously, You're I think a, a lot of people You're can holder. relate to that. And we don't want to do that again. No, we um, don't want to repeat of what we right? saw in the spring. Not at all. But I do want people to be prepared. So let's start in your medicine cabinet. You may already have some of these things, especially if you're Chanel, over-the-counter cold and flu remedies, right? You want to make sure you check the expiration dates. Don't forget about the children's pain relievers and fluids as well. Definitely want a working thermometer heading into this potential twin-demic. And then let's move over to your pantry. Good idea to have about two weeks worth of food so that in case we see slowdowns in grocery deliveries, or hopefully not, but another shutdown of food stores, you have enough to get your family through for two weeks with non-perishable goods and canned foods. Those are the important things that you really need to be worried about and making sure that you have them. No need to hoard. We are seeing plenty of paper products back in the stores, disinfectant wipes as well, but there are some limits on those. So one of our viewers in Texas said, what she does is she just picks up a couple extra items on each grocery trip, and then she just has enough for what she needs. So that's, that's a, a really, good tip. That's a good idea. Another, I think, important topic. I was out this weekend. People love to eat outside. It's crowded, right? So is it one of those things where we need to start reeling that in when it gets a little cooler? Is it fine since we're outside? You know, do we need to start having conversations with our employers? Like, is it time to kind of perk up a little bit? Things or? are going to change as we all start to having to move indoors, whether it's your kids in school or you're going back to the office. This is really the time to have the conversation if you haven't already with your employer about whether working from home continues to be an option for you. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, Ask about staggering your hours so that perhaps you can come in on off-peak hours. You're not sharing your workspace or building with as many people. That'll also help you avoid commuting and being in small compartments with people during rush hour. So that's important. In the classroom, this is, as you heard Dr. John Torres say, ventilation is everything. So ask if the teachers can keep the windows and doors open. Parents also might want to consider buying room air purifiers or cleaners for their classrooms. That's something that schools will need this year, especially the older schools that may not have those great air handling units. Let's squeeze in one more, and that's for a lot of people who are, you know, we're thinking long-term medical procedures, the mammograms, the doctor's appointments that you've been putting off, you know, all those things. What's your best advice? Don't delay. Get in now. You definitely don't don't want to be going to the hospital for a procedure during the peak of cold flu and potentially COVID-19 season. So get those appointments taken care of now. And I hate to say this, but consider your holiday shopping list and maybe you want to start chipping away at it, it now. <laughs> Al, I know you're an early bird, but the early bird gets the worm. Yeah. This year, think about it. Unprecedented demand for online yes. shopping. And you also don't really want to be in crowded indoor malls. So start planning early. Something Good to advice. think about.